All right, welcome back and uh, to TV3 New Day. This is the best morning show that you could have. And coming up, we'll show you something that's going to happen shortly in the Ashanti region, Akuma 87.9. We've got a new surprise for you, brand new. But first, let me say a happy, happy birthday to Abigail Abla Deku. She is one of our capable security guards here. And she, you would usually find her with the TV3 Mentor crew or Ghana's Most Beautiful crew. So Abigail, happy, happy birthday to you. Live long and stay strong and uh, be blessed in many ways. And also to Madame Esther Okine of the St. Andrew Anglican Church, Abbasokine. This is from George, um, George Nikwe, your son, and all the siblings. They say they wish you all, all the best. And if it's your birthday as well, happy birthday. Thanks to Grand Park Clothing, and Dan Suman for my outfit, 020-985-5696. Again, 020-985-5696. Those are the magic numbers to call to get something very special for you. But you know that around this time of the year, we usually would have Graphic and Stan Big Bang come together with a very, very bold initiative to talk about very key things within our business, uh, environment, our governance, and all of that. They are here again to talk to you after the last session we had. We're here again to talk to you. And this time we'll be delving into a very, very important conversation, uh, procurement and all of that. But first, let me introduce my guest to you, Mr. Franklin Sowa is the Director of Marketing at the Graphic Communications Group Limited. He joins me with Mr. Kojo Labi, who is also the Head of Communications at the Stambik Bank. And gentlemen, welcome. Good to see you. Thank you. Good as to always. see you as always. Bro. How are you doing? Very well, thanks. Yourself? Could you have you? I'm alive and well. Greater than Accra. Could you nice shirt? <laughs> I, I love your socks, man. When I grow, I'll buy some. Yeah. I think it will coordinate. I'll tell my mommy to get me one of your socks. <laughs> we are here again, Franklin. What's, what's going to happen um, sometime next week? Yeah. Um, thank you very much. Um, we're happy to once again lead in a very important conversation that mm. the nation will be engaging in the next couple of weeks. Mm. Um, graphic business, Tambic Bank, breakfast meeting. This is the fourth edition right. for the year. Right. And this time around, we are focusing on pre-budget 2022. And we are saying that it's not just a conversation pre-budget 2022, but we are delving into insights mm. and recommendations. <laughs> Thinking is that there could be ideas that will be relevant to budget 2022. Mm. There could be insights that may be shared to inform shipping of certain policy directions and stuff like that. Mm. I mean, we all agree that we don't have a bottomless uh, resource. Right. So it's critical that we understand how, what we have, how mm. much we have, and how to deploy or allocate to ensure that every penny is being invested mm -hmm. in the right uh, resource or right place and the expected returns are achieved. Mm. Ultimately, as a nation, as the business community is concerned, everything that is happening should inure to the benefit of the business community. Mm. Um, we must aim at uh, expanding the tax net, as we all say. We are seeing a lot of work being done on the digitization of our operations as a nation. Um, national ID card issues and all that. Mm. How would that contribute, for instance, into expanding the tax net of our people? We are discussing issues around competitive advantage in terms of what we can produce uh, economically viable and how it can contribute to the growth of our nation. Okay. So whatever we want to do mm. requires resources. That's right. Those resources may be coming from a source that is very limited. Mm. How do we ensure that whatever we are able to assign or allocate is bringing in the right resource? You also re recall that that's also a huge um, GDP uh, to revenue, a mm. huge gap mm. in terms of our budget deficit and right. all those right. things. How do we bridge some of these things? Mm. If, for instance, you are spending over 70% to service interest on loans, when the loans <laughs> are still the there, you know, still there. The, exactly, the principal is there, and you are spending so much of your resources or your revenue to service interest, is this sustainable? What paradigm shift do we need okay. to make our nation that nation beyond aid and that nation that can use whatever resource you're able to harness internally mm. from the natural resources God has blessed us with? How are we using the returns from some of those things? 
to improve our lot. So these are some of the things that we are bringing together, experts in various fields okay. and trailblazers in industry. Mm. Um, we'll, we'll come there and talk about the experts and who will be on the panel. Sure. But could you, I know that synonymous with your uh, breakfast meeting, Stambic and uh, the Graphic uh, Communications Group Limited, you'd have panel conversations. What key highlights are you looking forward to from the panel members? Well, thank you very much, um, Johnny. Mm. I think that when we, we join our partner, Graphic, for mm. this um, wonderful um, platform, one of the biggest things that we had as an objective was to drive conversations. It takes two forms where you have the panel. Mm -hmm. So that is the day that it happens. But inbuilt for this program has been the chance to get people to contribute either through their comments, their suggestions, um, mm -hmm. all the things that they send in, where you are generating conversations around what are critical for the nation. Okay. The things that stand for national good. Mm -hmm. So that every nation needs to have difficult conversations. But when you have a buy-in, when you have the people in sync with what opinion leaders, um, industry, political leaders are doing, even if it's a bullet we need to bite, mm. it means that you won't bite with a, a look of pain on your face, but mm. uh, something close to a green. What right. am I trying to say? When you have many p people believing that the cause is difficult, but we can surge ahead mm. for it, it means that there is support for anything that is difficult. So you, you heard my brother um, Franklin talk about how we do not have a bottomless pit. I, somewhere last two years or so, when mm -hmm. I, I saw some of the figures, between interest rate payments mm -hmm. and then the wage bill for government of Ghana, I'm mm -hmm. sure much of the money is gone. They, they will be left with no, not even the bone to chew. Mm -hmm. So I guess what we're trying to say this time around is that can we influence the budget decision, the, okay. the conversation? Okay. If we cannot, what are the areas where we all get on board to uh, believe in what the difficulties that come up would, would offer? Okay. okay. Many people recall when we were given the chance of free water mm -hmm. and electricity. At the time, I guess people enjoyed it. The moment we were told we had to pay, you and heard the free reality hits. It set in. Yes. I am sure there are many interesting things like that that government may have up its sleeves. Mm -hmm. If it's digitization, is it where we want to spend our money? If it's about um, support for the state sector, you know, the, the likes of Thor, the likes of um, STC. You've read the stories. Mm, SOEs. Yes. And Should the state continue to support it in that manner? Mm. Should the state take up a role of a strategic partner? Should the state divest itself of it and let the private sector run it? These are the kind of conversations I'm sure right. we'll be confronting come um, Tuesday. Mm. And that's where we want the way to go. It's just a platform. Mm. Let the people be heard. Let us all be citizens. I see. Not spectators. Not spectators. Franklin, yeah. who will you impanel? So we are fortunate to have the Honorable Minister of State at the Ministry of Finance, Charles Edu Bohin, okay. to deliver the keynote address. Then we have uh, Dr. Abdullahi Ali Natia. Mm. Um, speaking from on one perspective of um, modernization okay. in terms of revenue mobilization, okay. we have Dr. Um, Randolph Enso uh, Abdallah uh, Ambala, mm. who is also a senior lecturer at Gimpa okay. and a financial consultant. And then we have Dr. Priscilla Chumisi Bafo from mm. the economics department of the University of Ghana. Okay. Uh, these are people who have done extensive work on various aspects of economy management, mm. of um, financial prudence management, private sector understanding and all that. So we are hopeful that they will have some insights. We don't want like just a talk shop. Okay. We are hoping that they will share some incredibly uh, exciting insights mm. that should be useful to policymakers and the powers that be to pick up some of these things. So, for example, in, in the area of public procurement, I mean, we've all heard the stories and, and the narratives. We saw the um, Auditor General's report yeah. talked about financial irregularities, uh, procurement irregularities, and salary irregularities, all of those ones. What role, for example, and what perspectives would you like to hear from the panel regarding the role of the Ministry for Procurement and the Procurement Authority 
in plugging the loopholes. I don't, like, like we have said, the, the, the issue is this. Uh, the economic management, financial management is two-way. Mm. Whilst you try to expand your revenue inflows, you also try to be very efficient in your spend. And it's becoming obvious by the day mm. that we seem to be losing on controlling the, the cost. Mm. And no matter how much you bring in, if the cost is not controlled, it's like fetching water in a basket, you will never uh, uh, harness enough. And I think those are some of the things we want to look at. Mm. That, for instance, if out of the taxpayers' money, mm. you, it's, it's, it's a, pro a project that should cost X, it's costing X plus 100, mm. and it will, it will be normal. What it means is that we, we will get people who, who will even be reluctant to even pay taxes. And so there will be tax evasion issues and all that. Right. If we are trying to spend money to invest, to digitize that space, so that we get a certain cross-section of our people enrolled in a system where you can track how much whoever is earning, like it is done everywhere else, mm. then whatever the tax obligations are automatically works out and we all feel the need and we are responsible enough to deliver. Believe you me, our nation will be better. I hear you. That accountability will be there. Mm. That sense of agency will be there. The sense of ownership to contribute a little as individual citizens to the national benefit will, will, will be a given. I will come to where we have the party and what time and who can join and all of that. But could you, a very touchy subject, of also of uh, in terms of widening our tax net, has often come up, religious bodies and NGOs and the fact that they should be taxed because some of them are making money. I mean, go to church these days, they are selling everything from oil to handkerchief to salt to uh, whatever it is. Kane. Say again, to canes. Yeah, yeah. What would, you, what would you like to hear from the panelists on that subject regarding taxing churches and NGOs in our attempt to widen the tax net? I won't, I won't attempt to um, predict, but that conversation has been ongoing for quite a bit. Mm. And um, I've heard the religious sections of our society respond by saying that it's, the direction we are taking is unfair because it will sound or look like double jeopardy where we will be taxing what has been taxed already. I think it's a bigger conversation that we all can have as a country. It's about the religious people. It's about the lady you buy the clearly live from. How much tax is, how much tax is she paying? Mm -hmm. The guy whose taxi you are riding in, for example. Uh, how much does he pay uh, compared to the guy in the former sector? They will tell you to pay. But you notice each time we have a look at the GRA figures, mm. it keeps going up. I read Somebody this week that GRA says they are already over 39 billion, even in the year of COVID, mm. when we are just about recovering, mm. right? That means the target will keep rising because there are huge gaps right. that will keep identifying. Right. I don't know if it's about the, uh, I don't want to mention the religious body, but I don't know if they are the answer. Mm. I don't know if it's about my Rasta people or whichever group, but I guess that the bigger conversation for the country called Ghana is. Uh, can we keep tasking? Yeah. Can we keep taxing, taxing. Our, mm. people? our people? Or should we move into the area of encouraging um, businesses in certain areas so as to make money that we can rather get more? I see. Um, do we direct it in such a way that use tax as an incentive mm -hmm. to get us into certain sectors? Mm. Or those who've made their money, we should tax it. I, I get in other countries, there's always this constant uh, issue around do you tax the rich the more? Mm. Or make more anti -rich, anti rich and poor, poor, poor. <laughs> I have met people who tell you mm. they pay taxes and when they tell me what they pay, and I ask myself what I pay in a day, like I was in the same country. But equitability is always a really I hear you. Second November, I'm sure we'll find some more answers. Frankly, quickly, we're wrapping up now. Tell me who can attend the forum, where are we having the party? And what time do we start? So the event, like we rightly said, is 2nd November 2021. It starts at half seven at uh, Labadi Beach Hotel, strictly by invitation, invitation. for the physical audience. audience. Okay. Um, you can follow us on Daily Graphic and then on the Stambik uh, um, pages as well. We want as many people as possible 
to follow this. Okay. We, we will open the platform for them to share their comments and all that. Mm -hmm. In fact, they can start sharing even from now okay. of their views, certain recommendations they have, whatever it is. Let people share on our platforms, Daily Graphic and then Stambik. We'll put all these things together. We'll open it up the relevant areas that maybe some of these panel members could address. Right. We will bring okay. it in and make sure that a cross section of the views of the people right. will be well heard. I and hear captured. you. Thank you very much. Mr. Franklin Sowa is the head of uh, marketing, director of marketing at the Graphic Communications Group Limited. And also Mr. Kujo Labi is the head of communications at Stambik Bank. Gentlemen, thank you very much as always. A pleasure to, to have you around here.